Ghost train. Ooh, no, 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 Jace, it's no? Ooh, okay. Right. Ghost train. Ooh, Welcome to the Ghost Train. Well, shake your hoof, shake your hoof, Nobby. Shake that hoof. Hey, come on, come on, read it to us again. Oh, it's great again. news. Come Nobby. on, come on. Oh, Nobby got a will, you see, right? And he's been left something in this will. And right, okay, ready? Yeah, go on. Listen to this. I'm all ears. De no, you got two ears. <laughs> Dear Norbert O'Neill. That's me, folks. <laughs> hey, listen. Norbert. Norbert. Not as daft as Gerard, is he? Dear Nobby, okay, yeah. dear Nobby, you have inherited the title of Lord Sheep of the Manor That's me. by your great great uncle Malcolm. Fantastic, he's a great uncle, he is. No, he's a great great uncle. Oh, all right, great great right, yeah. uncle. Yeah. Unfortunately, Malcolm, being a lover of practical jokes, yeah. has set you seven things to collect before you can claim the title. Oh, that's typical of him. Well, listen, here's the seven things, right? Okay. Shamrock, yeah. some peat, some peat. yarn, mm -hmm. a shillelagh. What's that one into down? A rare feather, yeah. eel, an eel, and a flag. Mm. And you've got to collect them by midday June the 3rd. Oh, no, that's today. Oh, we'll never get them in time. Don't worry, oh. Nobby. Look, I've already sent the other three out. They should be out there now. Let's see if oh, we can great. see them. They should be out there collecting now. How are you doing, guys? Uh, well, there's Sabra. Oh, she's down by the rare bird sanctuary. She'll get me the feather then. Exactly. Oh. There's Paul. Oh, oh it's me trying to get you a haircut. Yeah. That's right. Talking to your barber. That's right. And there's Francis. Oh, I don't know what she's doing. Joyriding as usual, if you ask me. Yeah. Well, look. Apart from that, of course, we're sending up the normal transmissions to you, the aliens, and we have got for you the best stuff. Just watch some of this. Yeah. Look, up there, Jared, on the hill, the castle of Dr. Fischenstein. He'll sew you back together. <laughs> Follow me. What? A hand might for Lord O'Neill or do you know how? Is a hand might? Hand might down to Lord Sabra. Well, it was getting near the end of the lesson and everyone was a bit restless, and laughing and joking and getting more and more in trouble. We'd better get some bait. Worms is best. Also live, we've got the beautiful South and... Nobby, listen to yeah, this. What's this? 
we've got the best Jason Donovan competition. We haven't. We have. You can win Jason Donovan's own skateboard. More details later on. Let's see where Francis is. Francis, mm, can you hear me, Francis? Where are you? Mm, Francis, Francis, can you see some Pete, Francis? Well, I'm trying to like find some peat. I mean, it's like mud, but special. I can't find any. Oh, this is Lord O'Neill, and we're in his garden. Lord O'Neill, thank you very much for allowing us to park in your garden. Where are we exactly? We're in Shane's Castle in County Antrim, at the home of the O'Neills of Clannaboy. And you're an O'Neill, so this is yours? Yes, we've been here since the 16th century at least, and probably before. 16th century, all that time ago. Obviously, you can't remember that, that was ages. No, no, no. What else is here? I mean, we've got the, this train, we've got a fun fair. What else uh, is here? Well, we've got a little fun fair. We've got this little engine here, which used to run on a railway down in the south of Ireland, where it drew peat, or turf, as we call it here, oh, right. out of a bog. So you own this? This is your toy? This is all part of, yes, you could call it a toy, but it's used for the entertainment of the public all the time. Oh, right. Pete, did you say Pete? I said Pete, yes. But what did they use it for? Well, it, mainly for burning, for, um, oh, of course, for, the, yeah. for, the, for the house, you know. In the old days, they don't use it much. Oh, of course, I'm a bit slow. I am a bit slow. I need some peat. Have you got any spare? Uh, I have a bit of peat for you, yes. Could yeah. I have some? Yes. Oh, Give thank you very much, Lord O'Neill. Do I have right. to curtsy when you say no, Lord? No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know <laughs> the etiquette. Lord O'Neill. All right, then, shall <laughs> we have a go? All right, all all right then. Nobby, yes, OK? I think I found some peat or mud or turf, whatever it's called. OK, then. All right. Oh, kiddo yeah, kids. So well done, Francis. Woo. We've got the peat. Woo. That's the first thing we need. All, all we need, now, we is need what? now is some shamrock, yarn, yeah, shillelagh, yeah. rare feather, yeah. eel, and the flag. Yeah. Fine, no problem. <clears throat> Let's watch Bugs Bunny. <laughs> juice and carrot juice again. Ugh. I hope the lake's warmed up a little this morning. <sighs> Ten, nine, eight. <sighs> wow, the hole seems long this morning. Three, two, one, fire! the top of this. Hey, who plugged up the hole? Why, well, the sun ain't even out yet. No wonder I'm so sleep. Yikes, what was that? <coughs> well, ask a silly question. me I should have stood in bed. Where the heck am I anyways? Well, wherever it is, I don't like it and I'm getting out of here. Hey, maybe that character wearing a spittoon can help me. At last, after 2,000 years of work, the Illudium Q36 explosive space modulator. Hey, pardon me, sir, but could you... At long last, my dream come true. Hey, Doc, wait! I want to ask you something. <laughs> uh, pardon me, Doc, but could you rent me a U-Dry flying saucer? I've got to get back to the Earth. The Earth? Oh, the Earth will be gone in just a few seconds. Oh, well, uh, don't bother, then. No point in wasting money on a flying saucer when the Earth's not going to... Again, Doc, but uh, just what did you mean by that crack about the Earth being gone? Oh, uh, I'm going to blow it up. It obstructs my view of Venus. It does? That's a shame. Ah! 
Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. The Elodium Pew 36 explosive space modulator. That creature has stolen the space modulator. Delays, delays. <laughs> that creature and return the Illudium Q36 explosive space modulator. I shall have to create more Martians. Hey. This Martian hot rod better get at least a million miles to the gallon. The only thing just across the street. Oh, goody! My Illudium Q36 explosive space modulator. Well, back to the old drawing board. Boy, it's really wonderful to be back in civilization. Run for the hills, folks, or you'll be up to your armpits in marshes. Oh, hi. We're here looking for things for Nobby's will so he can collect his inheritance. I can't see a thing down here. Paul, can you see anything up there? Well, I don't know. you better come up. OK. Come upstairs. Morning. Well, this is Shane's castle and it's the tower. And from here, we should be able to see more or less everything. The thing about it is, the sooner we find something, the quicker oh, we can be rich. a lot rich. of chairs. Yeah. Oh, see? I can't see anything North, here. south, east, west. Can't see a thing, Paul. Who's that? Uh, I don't know. I think. That looks like that guy, Billy from Bread, Nick Conway. Nick, That's right. Hi. Hello. What, what are you doing here? <laughs> nice to see you. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I just thought it'd make a change from the Mersey, you know? Ah. Oh, just nice. like a cleaner lake and all that. Well, the thing is, Maybe Nobby it's... just got this wool and we have to find some things from it, like peat and Nobby. yarn and a shamrock yeah. and a, sh a, sh a shamrock? Yeah, yeah. A shamrock. Well, I've got this badge here. Oh, brilliant. Can I well, take that, that to Nobby? Yes, it's oh, great. perfect. Hey, can I get to meet Nobby later? Uh, it's one possibly of my heroes. On the ghost yeah, train. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. I'm going to take this to Nobby. See you later. All right, then. Great. And the other thing we need is yarn, and I saw some sheep shearing earlier. And I think that if sheep. Nobby's going to be a lord, he ought to have a damn good hairdo. Do you not agree? I agree, yeah. yeah. Short back and sides. Yeah. I think it was over there. I'm not entirely sure, mm. but I think so. So you're going to meet Nobby a bit later, right? Yeah, my mm. hero. Mm. Top Good. boy. He's a really nice Go guy. on then, Nobby. Right, OK, this is me after I came back from my holiday in Benidorm. Good turn, good turn. Yeah. Uh, that's my brother, Sid. Oh, Sid the sheep. Yeah. Uh, that's me, just after I came out of the bath. But I couldn't find my hair dry. I think it was... All right. Oh, uh, that's a gatecrasher at a party. Don't know who he is. Oh, uh, no, it could be Barry Mafia in disguise. Oh, that's me, Auntie Viv. She's into heavy metal. All oh, right, cool, well, she'll she... she like to see pictures. Right?
Here am I, your intrepid reporter at the EMI Record Factory. There's hundreds of reporters here, and I'm here to interview Peter Pan of Pop. Who is it? I'm not telling you, you have to wait and see. Cliff, the best of me is your hundredth single. Do you still get a thrill out of having a hit record? Well, I mean, you never make a record hoping it'll be a flop. No. I mean, obviously, you make a record thinking, oh, I hope everyone likes this. Mm. And for me, the feeling's never, ever changed. Mm. It's different, though, because when I first made a record, obviously, I spent the whole time going, oh, crikey, is that really me? You know, anybody that's messed about with a tape knows that when they first hear their voice back, you think, it can't be me. I went through all of that, though, 30 years ago. <laughs> so the feeling was different. Now it's more of a... Uh, you know, there's an excitement thinking, I wonder if I've sung it well enough, I wonder if I've picked the right song for this moment in time. So many years gone Still I remember How did I ever let my heart believe In one done like a complete cross-section of style like musically you know yeah. from ballads to pop and like everything in between um, which is your favorite sort of style or is there any sort that you think you wouldn't try or well I mean I think that you have to start getting honest with yourself really early on and say f for instance there are things that I can't do I mean I'm not going to get into heavy metal because you know the, the heavy metal singers have a very specific type of voice and uh, I, you know I don't kid myself I can't sing like they can sing but there again they can't sing Missy Nights you know I mean pfft. So, you know, we all kind of even out in the end. And you've also done musicals and films. Was that by chance? Well, the first kind of movie I ever did was by chance, really, because uh, I had just recorded my first record, Move It, and it wasn't even um, released when a film company came to the record company and said, we're looking for an up-and-coming pop singer. And, of course, my name came up. I was the new signing to EMI, and I got this part in this movie. But, of course, while I was making the movie, Move it when shooting up the chart, so they had an up and coming pop singer, you know. Yeah. We'll have no ending if we can hold on. And I think I've come this far because of you. Could be no other love, but ours will do. You were my wife. And your fans are like from children to grandparents. You know why? Why do you think? I that think I've probably got more grandparents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but well, I, the reason why I think there's a large age group, uh, age range, is because um, you see, rock pop music. It was inevitable that uh, that it would that it would grow up, but also that it wouldn't leave behind behind young people. When I was 18 and got into rock and roll, my aunts and uncles who were like in their 40s didn't like it at all. They were into Perry Como and Frank Sinatra and big bands. They did not like rock and roll. Now I'm an uncle, I'm in my 40s, and my nephews and nieces like the same music I like. Yeah. So it's kind of broken down the generation gap. Um, is that the secret of 30 years' success? I don't know that it's a secret, but yes. it's the I only thing I can put it down to, really. I mean, I can't see what... There's no other reason. It defies all analysis, really, the fact that someone like myself should stick around for so long. I can't go around saying I'm the greatest singer in the world. That's why I'm, I've been so big for so long. Because who's the greatest singer? All I know is I try to sing in tune. No one will ever touch me more And I only hope that in return I might have saved the best of me Cliff, 
we have got a competition for our ghost train, all our ghost train groupies. I know you have, yes. What is it? Well, it, we've got two tickets, two pairs of tickets, that is, for my 17th of June concert at the Wembley Stadium. I'm there for two nights, but these two pairs are for the Saturday. Now, anybody that can answer this question, and by the way, we have, in fact, pushed in very subtly a clue during our interview. What, in fact, was my first hit record? Well done, Cliff. 50 hits, and he doesn't look a day over 143. Are you joking? Cliff! Well, if you want to see Cliff, if you want to get two pairs of tickets to go and see him at Wembley, and you can win this special, unique Cliffage jacket. It's got all the singles on the inside, not all the singles, not all the records, like all the names of them, right? You've got to answer the question, send it on a postcard to Ghost Train. We've got, we've got Wake Up and Ghost Plus after the break. Don't you dare go away, OK? Hello, Gary. This is Nobby. Just continue in the hopes that eventually you may hear my dulcet tones. Hello, Gary. Where are you? I think we might have a suspect cable here, but it might be the mic. We're just going to change the mic. Got now got a new mic on it. Have a look at that. One, two, three, four. Words for you, Nobby. Hello there, Gary. Is that better? Can you hear me? Yay or nay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that okay? Just tuck that round somewhere. How long was that, Anne? Two minutes. A bit brutal here, sorry. That's all right, don't worry. We'll get used to it. We'd to take the other one off, wouldn't we? Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to do it at the top of this item. All right, yeah, yep. everything well. Good man. It's fine. Grand, grand, grand. Here we are here. Yep. So doing that item first. Pardon? Yes, that's right. Well, that's the go. coming to us. No!
not be, not be. I'm so excited, what? and I think that if. You're going to be the Lord of Shane's Castle. Oh, yeah, Castle. Shane's Castle. If you must yes. get a new hairdo. Yeah. Hairdo? Oh, come on, pal. Look, I'm not having a Mohican or a Pam or nothing fancy like that. There's a sheep shearer here, Nobby. He can do it for you now. I'm sure he's very good, but I'm happy as I am. Thanks, mate. Look, I'll just check. I'll just see how long it takes. Hello. Hi, look, how long does it take to shear a sheep? Between a minute and two. Nobby, it only takes a minute or two. I haven't got that long. Bye. Well, Nobby, Nobby, we can probably leave some on the side or the top. Do you oh, have to right, take then. the entire thing off? Oh, yes, the whole thing. Why is that, then? Well, you can't take off one part. You have mm -hmm. to take off the whole thing for market and value. Right. If you uh, break your fleece in any way, it's it, uh, not, it's worth, not worth as much money. Oh. Well, Nobby, we'll need your whole coat, otherwise it won't be worth any money at all. Hey, you're, you're not scalping me. Uh, anything from... Three pounds to your five, five pounds. Your coat, Nobby, could be worth three pounds or five pounds. Is that all? Oh, you're not yes, getting into that all. much. Come that on, does pal. it hurt the sheep? No, and no, no way. It tickles, <laughs> though, I'll tell you that. Nobby, one. it doesn't hurt. I know, but it tickles it like hurt crazy. In any way whatsoever. <laughs> what? What do you say then? No, a I'm sorry. I'm staying inside. just as I am with me tufty bit. Now, look, this is how you'll look when you're finished. Oh, very oh, nice. This is lovely. <laughs> oh, Oh, no, stupid, stupid, stupid. I didn't tell you the address to write to if you want to get in the cliff competition on a postcard to Ghost Train, P.O. Box 88, London WC 1A 2XX. Right, I've got that. Uh, right, I'm down here by the lake because I've got to get an eel for Nobby's will. But I've got to learn to fish. Um... Is that a leprechaun? <laughs> no, no, it can't be. Right, got to learn how to fish. The vicious boys can show me. My cousin, here they go, fishing, wake up. Yeah! 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 Come on, let's go for a swim. I'm playing the blues. I'll join you in a minute. Come on! <laughs> Come on in, Andy! The water's lovely! You must be mad! You don't know what's in there, Angelo! Andy, go up! Ah! 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 Andy! Ah! What's happened to me? What's happened to me? Well, it's a very expensive swim. You've lost an arm and a leg there. What am I going to do? Um. Wait. I've had an idea. Look, up there. On the hill, the castle of Dr. Fischenstein. He'll sew you back together. Follow me. <laughs> Welcome, dear boys. What can I do for you? Is my leg and my arm. The shark hit them. I think I've got my sewing kit here somewhere. Can you, like, crochet it on? Well, I'm not so good with the crochet hook, but you should see me with the darning needle. Supposed to put one on, not take that one off. Keep still, ah. dear boy. I've got two left legs now. No, ah. I want a right one. <laughs> he hasn't done a bad job considering what he had to start with. We catch big fish. Yes, we'll catch the big fish, but we need some help. Who are we going to call? That wasn't the one. That wasn't the one. That was its friend. It's all right, we'll get him. We'll get him. Don't worry. I don't think this is the one that, that ate you, Ange. Have you got it yet? 
not yet. Oh, why, why can't you do something? You're just sitting here doing nothing. You've got to wait. You've got to be patient. You've got to wait for the fish to come in. What's that catnip you've got there? If you just put your bait out there on its own, yeah. the chance of them finding it will be pretty remote. Yeah. The idea of using the catapult is to put the bait out there right. so that you've got quite a quantity of bait in the water. And have a go at that. Yeah. Mmm. Right. Food! Tasty! What was it? Maggots! <coughs> <coughs> the bait the kids are using is much too small. Meat! Yeah! Something big and meaty. Mm. <laughs> Cast the bait out! Where's he gone? I don't know. You think he's gone under? Maybe we've got a bite. There's nothing pulling on the rope yet. I think I've got one. And I think this is the one. No, Andy, it's me! Fish. Andy! Ange. Andy! Ange. Ah! What are you doing in the water? No, what? don't look behind you. Don't make that sound. You make me nervous. Just, Just swim straight towards me, OK? Whoa. No, wait. Stay where you are. Pull me in. No, stay where you are. I've had an idea. Why don't you climb inside the shark and put the coat hanger around its tonsils, and then I'll pull you both in. Go for it. Oh, no, the rope. Help me! Kick him! No! Ah! Why don't you get hooked on fishing? To find out where, ring 01 222 8070. That's 01 222 8070. Now! We'll weigh this one in, Cole. Cole, that's just a beauty. Cole, that's got to be the biggest one of the day. Is that a photo of it, John? Yeah. I think I've got the biggest one of the day. Look! Oh, yeah. Well, there we go. 01 222 8070. That's the phone number. Here I am in the middle of Loch with Patahara, and we're fishing for eels on Nobby's Will. Look, here are the eels, and they're all. Can you, can you see that? Look. So we can bring it up there just a little bit. There are all the eels, and they're quite heavy. <laughs> Pat, uh, how many eels are there in there, do you think? Oh, about two stone of eels. Two stone? Yes. So you don't know how many? Not exactly, no. Not oh. uh, just at the moment. Uh, is there any particular time that's the best time of day to fish for eels? Uh, normally, uh, either shortly after daylight or about a couple of hours before dusk and evenings. Right. And Loch Ness is famous for it, where it's eels, is it? Uh, mostly through Europe, yes. So what do you do? You go out and you get them and you put them in here, and then where do you take the eels to? Uh, well, we have to keep the eels living all the time. And uh, they're, hold, they're took back to the lawn, held in holding tanks, and then they're collected, shipped down to our fishery, and then exported but, throughout uh, Europe. And they're live when they're exported? They must be live, yes. Why can't why can't we kill them already and you know and do like normal fish? Well, unfortunately, Europe wouldn't accept them due to import controls and All right. pollution and that they must be living. Okay. Do you like eating eels yourself? Personally speaking, yes. Yes. Once yes. or twice. But... And what, what's the taste like? Uh. Is it? I mean, is it like fish or is it like meat? No, it's a it's a sort of a fishy, oily. Oily. Type of food. Right. And like in in London, they you know they do jelly deals. How else can you have eels? Oh, you can have eels uh, smoked, or conventionally just fried in, a, in, a, in an open frying pan. All oh, right. In their own oil. Did you know that in the olden days, how they used to fish for eels was they used to get a horse's head, cut off the horse's head, right, tie some rope round it, throw it in the in the water, then all the eels would go and eat the horse's head, and they'd pull the horse's head out, bring it up here, shake it like a boot, and all the eels would fall out. Luckily, we don't have to do that today. Can, can I hold one? Certainly. Oh, dear. Oh, God! <laughs> oh. No, 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 no. no. I'll, I'll take some jelly deals back to Nobby, I think. <laughs> oh. oh. What else does Nobby need now? Uh, I think we need a shillelagh. What's a shillelagh? 
Shillelagh. <laughs> well, anyway, you've got to go now into this dark tunnel and find it. I thought we were going to go. No, no, you, Deborah, on your own. What do you see? Are you scared? No, I am not scared, but I think it's necessary that sh you go in there on your own. All right. I'm not scared. I'll meet you around the other side. I'm not scared. <laughs> I've got Pete! Pete? Who's Pete? Oh, no, not somebody else to live on this ghost train. It's crowded enough as it is. No, I've got Pete for your will. Oh, right. I thought this was turning into a hippie commune or something. <laughs> no. When you're rich, will you buy me a present? Of course I will. But for now, you'll have to put up with Ghostbusters. <laughs> from this sauce, sir. Waiter, pass the pasta. Pass the bread! There's a fly in my soup! <laughs> I say, Olivia, weren't those the uh, ghost smashers who just ran by? I hadn't noticed. Where's our waiter? Oh, you know, the ghost smashers. They're always in the National Inquisitor. That's the National Intruder, John, and they're called the Ghost Busters. Can't you get anything right? Oh, the Ghost Busters, of course. Mm. Maybe we should contact them about our little uh, problem? Absolutely not. We can handle one old ghost by ourselves. There's no reason to bring in outsiders. Yes, dear. A dinner is served, madam. Control, Ray. Nothing unusual here. <laughs> I've always wanted to do this. Think fast. <laughs> One trap with ghost stuffing coming up. Good going, guys. Uh, Mr. Ghost Smasher, uh, no, Mr. Ghost Buster, might I have one of your calling cards? We don't employ ruffians. We can solve our own ghost problems. Now, come along. Yes, dear. Whatever you say, dear. He seems okay, but I wonder what he sees in her. Winston! We're going to get rid of the ghost of Uncle Horace all by ourselves. Now, just pay attention, and I'll explain it to you. Yes, dear. And, John, try not to slam the car door. Yes, dear. He thinks it here, he thinks it there. He's looking for it everywhere. Is it in the hallway? 
maybe in the well, that old elusive, uh, whatchamacallit, this seeking sure is hard work. If only I had some idea what I'm looking for, huh? Oh, that was close. I'll need this in case there were things in the dark, like, like ghosts, you know. There must be something wrong with this mirror. I'll have to get it fixed. Are you certain this plan will work, my dear? My plan is flawless, perfect. It's not in the attic. It's not in the well. Oh, maybe I should check the basement. No, no, I already did that. Maybe the pantry. I always like checking in there. Ooh, um, a boo. Think me! That sounds like a ghost! Dear me, I'll never find my, uh, whatever with a ghost hanging around. Oh, no! What if he's looking for something, too? What if he's looking for me? Ooh, um, E. Oh. Woo, woo, woo. How did I sound, Olivia? Rather spooky, I thought. I'm not sure, and I'd rather not dwell on it. It'll make the outlook so depressing. Shall we take the right, the left, or just forge on ahead? We can just get this over with much quicker if we split up. You go that way. But Olivia, my sweet, I would hate to leave you alone and unprotected. And who's going to protect you? Oh, there's Uncle Horace. Let's get it right the first time, okay? And stop shaking, he's just a ghost. It's, it's a ghost! Was that Uncle Horace? You didn't tell me he was so, so ugly. How dare you call my uncle ugly? Before he took up haunting, Uncle Horace was the finest chef in the East. I was his favorite niece. Then he let me down. He... Let's stop standing around, okay? was close. I never thought that ghosts could be so, so ugly. Ghosts. Well, this certainly complicates things. Think me, how am I ever going to find my, uh, uh, whatever it is? Ghosts in the attic, spirits in the night, trolls on the bridge. That's all right. Call the Ghostbusters. Just dial no ghosts. Yes, yes, yes. No. Yes, the Stewart Mansion in Glen Cove. Oh, yes, we're very confidential. Here you go, boys. Your next assignment. It's a real rush job. Not if you hung me by my toes from the World Trade Center. We've been at it for two days straight, and I'm going Betty by. We need our full eight hours. Yeah, there's nothing you can say that'll get us to go back out there. The Stewart Mansion, old money. And this time, I get that raise you promised. Hey, I'm you wide awake. Nice driving. Second of... I sure could use some cool night air. Yeah, yeah. Nice cottage. Pretentious without being ostentatious. Looks like they had one heavy party in here last night. Woo-wee. 
The ghost that did this must have been one bad dude. No wonder Janine said this was a rust job. Gee, uh, I don't know, guys. This may be too much for us. I don't think uh, we'll ever find that nasty old ghost. It's too bad we have to give up so soon. We might as well face it. We're licked. We've only got one alternative. Yeah, let's go home. OK, I need some sleep. I thought I saw the strangest creatures! Four of them! I... And who's your friend? My friend is Ave O'Neill, a former High King of Ireland. Oh, he's got a few problems with his teeth, hasn't he? He's lost a few, I'm afraid. And what are you doing here, Kathleen? I'm studying the history of the O'Neill family and also of this castle. Oh, because they lived in Shane's castle? They did, yes. And what is their history? Oh, they have a long history that goes back well over a thousand years before mm. Christ. Wow, so mm -hmm. they must be one of the oldest histories. They are indeed, yes. Mm -hmm. The oldest traceable family left in Europe. Mm -hmm. and there must be a lot of legends attached to the house. There are. A great many legends. Mm -hmm. Like? What name well, for example, there's a banshee. A banshee? What's a banshee? Yes, a banshee is a restless spirit of a woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, yeah, they you know, scream a lot, don't they, banshee? They do, yes. They make a noise and they foretell of uh, good things and bad things that could happen to the family. Mm -hmm. And the banshee in this family is a beautiful girl called Kathleen O'Neill with red hair, mm -hmm. and she was drowned in the lake, and the fairies, the little people, took her to the bottom of the lake, and she was such a good spirit that they let her come back to the family to tell them where she had gone. And she still comes back and warns the family if anything bad or anything good is going to happen to them. Oh, I hope she's not around now. No, I think you'd have to wait till very late at night before you would see her. Mm -hmm. And what else is that? There must be loads of other things. Oh, there's loads of legends about this castle. Mm. It has been burned on several occasions. Mm. But look, you know, I've got to quickly get back to Nobby. I've got to take yes. him a shillelagh. Do you know where I can find one? As a matter of fact, yes. Ave has one for you here. Great. I'll take it here to Nobby. Thank you. Come on, Kathy. Let's go and take this to okay. Nobby. Bye. I bet you can't name everything we're sending up today without pausing, going now. Oh, Ghostbusters. Uh, Wipeout. Trapdoor. Uh, Impro game. Wipeout. Uh, beautiful South. Oh, where's the uh, where the I won, I won, I won. Uh, uh, Gerard the Gourmet has taken some eels and have prepared. Mm. You want some eel, Nobby? Mm. I think that's a no. Thanks. Franny, come on, have some eel. I'd rather salad. Come on, uh, no, 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 come on, an eel. It's, oh, it's, it's still alive. Oh. Come on, still alive. Don't go, don't go away. We'll be back in a second. Come on, all of it. Sabra is so slow sometimes. Sabra! Sabra! Oh, 
Hello. 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 This is our Dave Hemingway and Dave Brothering from the That's band right, The Beautiful South. How are you, fellas? Okay, Fine, thanks. thanks. Good. Nick. Bit, just gorilla as well. <laughs> Listen, I want to know what does the, the name The Beautiful South mean? Where does it come from? Why are you called The Beautiful it's, South? Well, it's just a silly, silly name, really. Mm -hmm. just a silly, silly group of people. And that's it, no, simple as no, that. No, no, really. What happened was uh, when we were writing the songs, we went to the south of France for a while to sort of get our heads together, you know. And uh, what are you doing? And it was so beautiful that we thought we'd call the band The Beautiful South. Right, right. So when you left um, the house, Martins, did you think you were going to form a band so soon? Um, no, I think we'd, thought we'd take a rest for a while, mm -hmm. you know, which we have done for about a year. And uh, now we're back with some other songs. Have you set out to make them different? Make your, set your sort of vocal sound and your sort of band sound a lot yeah, different to the house, so, Martins? Yeah, I think so, a little bit, yeah. Because, um, you know, I want to get away from that a, a little bit. But, you know, some songs will probably sound the same as well. So right, you know, right. Uh, so, what are your plans for this sort of near future? Well, we've got a single out at the moment, which you'll be hearing later on. Uh huh. And then, um, after that, we'll probably put another we've single out. We've recorded an LP already. Right. Is that going to be called The Beautiful South? Uh, no. I think it's going to be called Hogwash. It's a title of the LP. Right. So, watch out for it. It could be in the shops later this year. Tours? Any touring? Yeah. yeah. Next Wednesday, we we'll start a little mini tour in Liverpool. So, come along and see that, everybody. OK, well. I'm really surprised to see you come out of that tunnel because I was actually looking for Sabra, but it's good to see yeah, you. Yeah, we're surprised to see you. There's all these cameras everywhere. We were just going for a stroll <laughs> in the country. What's this big thing? Oh, it's shillelagh. Oh, not a shillelagh. Yeah. Oh, you know that eel that I gave Francis? Yeah. She didn't swallow, she just spat it out. Uh, okay, right now we're ready to play Tales from the Crypt. Ready, guys? Tales from the Crypt, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yep, yep, right, here yep. we go. Right, cool. right. Hello, who's calling Tales from the Crypt on 9 1? Fiona Hamilton, from Northern Ireland. Hi, Fiona, how are you? Fine, thank you. Oh, good. And um, for Tales from the Crypt, we want from you... Come on, then. ...something that you're wearing. Um, white shoes. White shoes? Yes. All right, white, white shoes. shoes. Okay, white shoes, White shoes, white shoes. Um, hello, like hello white Fiona. Ones. You still there? OK, right, who's on line two? Hello. Who's that? Michael. Michael. Hi, Michael. How Hi, are Mike. you? Hello, I'm fine. Good. OK, Michael. Yeah? Which room are you in in your house? The hall. The hall. The hall. The hall, OK. OK, okay. okay hall, a hall. A hall. A hall. A hall. And also, Michael, hall. he's still yeah. there. Hall. OK, tell me your favourite food. Your favourite food? Um, chips. Chips! Okay. Chips! Okay. Chips! Chips! So chips. Those are these guys and tails from the crib. Thank you very much, Michael. OK. Right. Good luck, guys. OK. So white shoes, the hall, white shoes. And chips. 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 Welcome to Tales. From the crypt. Right, okay. Once upon a time there were two spacemen. I know. I was one of those spacemen. And Nick Conway was Nick Conway was the other. Hello. Hello, Nick. Let's go outside. But to get outside, they had to go through the hall of the... Through the uh, hall? The oh, through the hall. That's one. So, let's go through the hall. You go first, Nick. Into the outer depths of space. Gee, I'm feeling a bit peckish, aren't you? Yes, yeah. it must be all this non-air we're not breathing. It must be it. Yeah, so what do you think? I brought some rations with me. Some rations, let's yeah. see them. Some real chips. So chips, oh, chips, chips. chips, that's right, chips. Yeah. OK, chips. And meat and potato but pie. Meat and potato pie. <laughs> no, chips. And gravy. No, Ooh. chips, it's only chips, chips we can eat. Only chips. But oh. wait, here on Venus, there is that monster called the chip monster. <laughs> she Not the chip monster. The chip monster, yes. And she looks a little. Oh, 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 oh dear. Give me your chips. Oh, I think it said we were coming. Give me your chips. The Give monster. Give me your the... chips. <laughs> Give me your chips. <laughs> wait, wait. No, this is good. I'll just kind of cover this in case there's some food. Right? Help! Um, Ray! No, 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 wait, right. Uh, so, so the chip monster managed to take the chips from Nick. Nick lay there. Let nearly, nearly dead, but not quite. Still breathing into his little globule, and the only, the only way that Nick could could get up because his shoes were so heavy was to take his shoes off. What colour were they, Francis? White. 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 And Francis took his white shoes off. Yeah, took his white shoes off very quickly. Yeah. Okay. I'm miming it. I'm miming it. I'm miming it. It's white shoes going off. One, and two. And now, now that the shoes were off, Nick just floated away. Come on, Nick. Let's see you float. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nick, you go and talk, you go and talk to Nobby. Guys, I have to tell you this. What? Terrible. What? No, 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 no,
can't get the, you can't get the stuff, can you? You these can't days? these days. You were great, Nick. I don't know about your two yeah. co-stars there. I thought they were rubbish. Yeah. And actually, I nearly called you Billy for a moment. Do you get confused no, between Nick. Nick and Billy? Yeah. Pardon? Do you get confused between Nick and Billy? Do people call you Billy very often? They do, yeah. Yeah. Living on the ghost train, though, you, le you learn to answer to most things, but that's another story. Because I'm a great bread fan, you know, being from the pool, like. You're from the pool? Yeah. Definitely yeah. a Tranmere Rover supporter. How did I you thought guess? You, were woolly, you were a woolly back as well. Oh, very that's funny. That's as well, isn't it? Oh, you have got all the jokes out today. Hey, you. Yeah, you. <laughs> ah, that's good. You're not actually from Liverpool, though, no, are you? No, I'm Mancunian. You're Mancunian. Yeah. But you Definitely like Liverpool. Definitely a City fan. You're a City fan? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I do like Liverpool, though. I have a great, great time. Isn't there. It? Some top mates, top yeah. people in Merseyside. Yeah, yeah, they're all dead nice, aren't they? Yeah. Well, now we've got somebody else who's dead nice. The one and only oh. Jason Donovan. Jason. Here for you on the little screen. Oh, Gungies, go away. <laughs> It's fantastic, eh? Isn't that great? Now, we've got a fantastic Brilliant. Jason Donovan competition. And the prize is, what is it, Nick? Skateboard. Yeah, signed Jason by Jason. Skateboard. That's right, and used Big by fan. him on Ghost Train. Now, the question's in two parts. There's one question today and another one next week. What's today's question, then, Nick? Today's question is, what was the full name of the character Jason played in the miniseries Heroes on ITV? Great question. Right, off you go. Practice your skateboarding. Right, now, don't forget, you need to hear next week's question as well. OK, I say settle down, chaps. Now, welcome to Top Hill. Lovely good morning and all that kind of thing. No, no, please, no, settle down in the back, would you please? Simon, please don't put your finger in there, OK? No. Welcome to the Empire game. We've got a bit of a ripping uh, game for you today. Not the least because a young Nigel's trousers don't fit him terribly well. So let's give him a big hand while he's still able to be with us. Would you please welcome uh, Nigel Crowell? Go mad, get all sweaty and that kind of thing. Let's uh, welcome the bear bringing up the rear. Yes, it's that bear behind uh, Brumble the Bear. Yeah! Okay, would you please welcome our two teams for this week who are Bellamin and Church Stratton. Yeah! And now, my little friend Mickey and I are going to make a few telephone calls. Well, rather, we're going to get the teams to make the telephone calls as we invite a member from each team to step up here one from Bellamin and one from Church Stratton. So let's have uh, Maria and Kelly up you come. Now then, you're going to have a phone call together, Maria's going to start it, I'm going to give her the opening line to the phone call, and you've got to carry on a conversation together, OK? And that is your opening line. You ready? Go. Hello? Hello? Who do you think you are? Pardon? Eh, who do you think you are? What are you going on about? Listen, Susan, it's me, remember me, I'm Maria. Oh, yes, I know. What's wrong? What are you going on about telling everybody my secret? Sorry, I couldn't hide it for long. How no? I'm sorry. Sorry, no everybody in the school knows about me, knows about me, and all you can say is sorry. Well, it just slipped out, you see, and... Oh, what a shame. Just slipped out there. OK, let's have another phone call as we uh, move along, and we'll have James up and Kate up. Oh, come, ready? Jenny. Jenny, we could have called you Kate. Kate's a nice name, but it's Jenny, isn't it? Yeah. You're going to do the opening line? OK. Right. Ready? 
Okay, go. Bring, bring. Hello. Hello, I'm here to complain about your Daniel. My Daniel? Yes, your Daniel. What, the dog? Yes, the dog. You uh, know what it's done this time? What's it been doing now? It's jumped all over, over your fence and all in my new rose bushes. Look, if you want to get the dog, get it. Um, get them yourself. I've got a lot to do today, thank you very much. Listen, I'm not coming round to get your dog because I know how vicious it, vicious it is. I could tell by the way it attacked my rose bushes. Vicious? It's teensy. It's no, teensy vicious. Teensy dogs attacking rose bushes. OK, they're going to manage to aim, stick yourselves down there. Let's have the next two up. Maureen and Rachel, up you come. OK, ready? You're going to do the opening line? Ready? Go. Bring, bring. Hello? Hello? Don't ever put the receiver down on me again. Put the receiver down? You were the one that put the receiver down. Don't lie, you did, and you know fine well you did. I did not. You did so. Well, I'm not surprised. You were talking a load of rubbish anyway. I was talking a load of rubbish, and yes, you were. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't think so, Hint. You were talking a load of rubbish. No, you weren't. You were talking about the chips are green down the chippy. I will. So they are. I've been to that chippy. Actually, they are green down there. Very unpleasant it is too. OK, let's have... Uh, why don't we have uh, James and Kelly at this time, OK? Oh, are you ready, Kelly? Shall I whisper it to you? OK. Your opening line is... Go. Hello? And where were you? Um, where was I? Um, I was in the toilet, how? You stood me up again, didn't you? Oh, come on, Will. I'm just well... fed up with it. Do you want to go out with me or not? Well... If you want me to tell the truth, no, really. But why? Oh, come on. I mean, I've been slagged all day for it. I mean, walking about with you, running the school all day, I mean, it was just too much for my pals. They just had to puke. Thanks very much. Look, Ken, I mean, you're not exactly my Donna or Kylie Minogue. You're not exactly my Jason Donovan, are you? Look, I just don't want any more to do with you. Is that OK? Fine with me. Fine, that's all right then. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, can I copy your homework tonight? No, oh, typical. No, sit yourself down there. Say she's ugly and then copy her homework. I don't know, disgraceful. We ask Maureen and Kelly to come up, is it? Was Maureen and Rachel? I've completely made it wrong, have I? Yeah. Will you forgive me? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to have a little discussion about it first. OK, here we go. And your opening line is? OK, go. Hello? Hello, is that Mrs Jones? I'm ringing about your advert in the newspaper. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, you're applying for the job? Yes, I'd like to. Have you got any qualifications? Well, I got D in history, B in English, and I'm not very good at all the rest. Well, I don't <laughs> think you're going to become a mechanic. With him? Well, I do make Lego bits, so I do know a bit about cars. I'd hire it for you. Straight away, they make Lego bits. That's, that's got to be the answer. What do you think there, Nigel? Well, you don't say. You don't say. You don't say. Who was that? <laughs> Didn't say. Hey. Hey. Go they, for it. And they said the age of variety was dead. Well, we phoned up Dial and Adjudication, Telecom's new service, and I think, well, Brumble... The decision gonna, was... It, we're going to have to give it to both of them. Both it was a draw. It's it a, was draw. a draw. Yes, it was a draw. Well, yes. so two winners there, by the way, and... Wild and not surprising. We'll be playing the games at home. We'll see you next week for some more improvisation. Bye bye. Nobby, Nobby, yeah. Nobby, I've got you uh, a shamrock and yeah. a shillelagh. You've got the shillelagh, great. Yeah, yeah. Now, where do I blow? I've always wanted to play one of these things. It's not a musical instrument, Nobby. What is it then? It's a sort of thing. It's a thing. Well, if we're not going to get any music like out of that, how about we get some music from the beautiful South? Yeah, and songs what's their song? Forever. For whoever. Whatever. What you? Whatever. 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 I don't know. I don't know. I love you from the bottom of my pencil case I love you in the songs I write and sing Love you because you put me in my rightful place And I love the PRS tricks that you bring Cheap Never cheap. I'll sing your songs till you're asleep. When you've gone upstairs, I'll creep. And
Nobby's will, he needs some yarn. Now, I've managed to get this skin off, off the sheep, this wool. Now, how does it turn into yarn? Well, I take some and prepare it here in my carders. Okay. Which straightens and separates the fibres. Yeah. And makes it easier to spin with. So it does. So, in essence, you comb it through, really? Yes. Just like combing your hair in the morning. Straightens uh -huh. and separates it. Now, do you, need, do you not need to sort of clean it or anything before or purify the wool, or is that done after? That's done after. I use the natural oil and the fleece to uh, make the fibres slide over each other and spin much easier. Uh-huh. So, once the fibres rolled up, join it onto the starting yarn. Uh-huh. And we're so you spinning spin the yarn. straight on? Yes. And the wheel's putting the twist into the yarn there to make the yarn. This wheel here, so, ah, you're doing this I'm with your foot here, yes. this is a foot motion. Yes, I treadle, she turns the wheel, oh god, it's broken. Right. And then the spun yarn winds onto the bobbin here in the centre. I see. So how long would it take to get a full, a full bobbin together? Oh, about half an hour to the quarters. Right, and to do this whole pile here of oh, wool. Oh, take me a couple of days, I'm sure. Right. <laughs> how long have you been doing this? Oh, about ten years now. Did you have to train or anything, or is it sort of learnt? Well, home? you can learn to do the basics in a day, and then it's just practice after that. Right. So it is to get a smooth, continuous yarn. Okay. Well, I will leave you because it takes a bit of time to yeah. make some more yarn, and I will rush off and tell Nobby that we are nearly there. Right. We'll nearly have all the things he needs for his will, and then he will be very, very rich. See you Good. later. Bye, Paul. Oh, I'm gonna get Sabra for this. We were going to do a limerick really well as well. I know. Look, enough of Sabra. What about Nobby? What have we got to get for him now? Um, he needs a rare feather uh -huh. and a flag. Gerard? Yeah? Why are you upside down? I'm not upside down. You are. Help! No, oh. no, let go. No, 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 We've got lots of stuff coming off. Hold my lips. We've got lots of stuff coming off in a second. Don't you dare go away. Help! Oh, oh, mommy! Now! When she returned, she was laughing her head off and the tears were running down her face. Breakfast. 
they're blind for the first couple of weeks, but I don't think they're in any danger here in the woods. Right. Yes. Right, I'm going to come into shots, okay? I'll walk in to you. Right. And I'll come in and I'll say, my sheep friend Nobby needs a rare feather for his will. So, um, oh, this looks like a place to get one. What's, you guys are uh, RSPB, aren't you? Yeah. What's that stand for? Blah, blah, blah. What's this place? Blah, blah, talk about the birds. Blah. I'll look at the thing. Do, 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 do. Look at the video. Talk about the thing. And then after they come back to us for 15 seconds, I say, all right, so where's my feather then? He's got my feather. Uh, Sabra, can you hear on your earpiece? Well, at the moment, I can't hear anything. Would be in the ear that's to camera, wouldn't it? Right, one and a half minutes. I'll be okay. There, OK. Good luck, guys. Yeah. What? Hmm? Well, you said, I told him to look himself. How'd you do that? Yeah. I wouldn't know to ask me. Could you use that hand mic for yourself as well? Is that what they want? Yeah, you're. I can hear myself really clearly. Yeah. Maybe it's just there. Okay. Friend Nobby needs a rare feather to collect his inheritance, and you guys, RSPC, RSPB, what does that stand for? It's the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. All right, so you should be able to show me a rare feather. What are you guys all doing here? What are you doing? Uh, bird watching, we're looking at birds, birds and all. For rare birds. And what's your job, Eddie? Well, basically, my job is to educate the children, um, maintain the nature reserve, and try and get youngsters involved in conservation. Because that's, that's what this area here is, isn't it? It's like a nature reserve. Nature reserve, yes. All part of Lord O'Neill's grounds, but we run 80 acres as a nature reserve. Mm -hmm. And what, what makes it good for a nature reserve? Why is this particular area over? Well, we have a good mixed woodland, oh. and the lock in the wintertime is like a big staging post. Oh. Uh, oh, look, there's some birds there. Now, what kind of birds are those floating on the lake? Great crested grebes. Mm -hmm. um, they're going through the courtship display. Um, they breed in the reed beds around the edge of the lock here. And are they very rare birds? They would have been if the RSPB hadn't been formed, mm. because people were persecuting these birds and virtually wiped them out for the feathers. Oh, no. And what kind of birds are those? They look a bit like ducks. It's a pair of mallard, which are quite common breeding ducks on the Loch Ney. Mm. Very common breeding ducks. Because yeah, Loch Ney is what, one of the biggest lakes, isn't it? It's the largest freshwater lake in the British Isles. Mm. Very big. And what kind of bird is that there, flapping around there? Oh, we're back on the mallards again. That's a mallard. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, looks like a tufted duck floating in the background. We got and um, of have you, what, why did you want to do this job? What was it for? I was always interested in conservation. Yeah. And I found that with this reserve, we can sort of get a lot of educational work mm. done as well. Oh, and we can work a lot with children. Mm. And children are the conservationists of the future. That's right. That's brilliant. Well, listen, who's got my rare feather then for Nobby? You have. What's your name? 
GSA. Tracy, thank you very much, Tracy. Nobby will really appreciate this. I'll see you guys later, right? We'll look through some binoculars. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Nobby, mm -hmm. when you're the rich lord of the castle, you won't forget your old friends, will you? Of course I won't. You oh. will. You'll go off with your girlfriends. Fuzzbox. Oh, Vicky and Maggie. Hey, living with them would be as though every day was full of pink, pink sunshine. <laughs> Video girls, Vicky, Maggie. Thank but um, how did you know about Nobby's will all of a sudden? He's been writing to us, well, me in particular, constantly. Actually, I am soon to be married, as you can see, I'm soon to be married to Nobby. So I think I'll get quite a lot from it. He has told that? us this. Hasn't he? He's it's kept true. that very quiet. Really but that means oh, no, you're going to have worry, a share worry, in the will. Don't worry, don't yeah, worry. You can climb my shoulder any time, really. So we're here at a fair. <laughs> Do you like fairs, girls? Oh, love them. Love well, them? I don't, actually, cos once I was, um, I went on a waltzer thing with the <laughs> French pen friends who I absolutely hated, and it made me sick for about three days. Were you sick over your pen friend? I wish I had a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about being sick, I'd just like to say hello to Eric, my boyfriend, who's in hospital at the hello, moment. Eric. Oh, hello, what's wrong you? with the darling? Um, oh, he's had his appendix out, bless his little cotton. You've got a boyfriend? That's a lot of Devastated. What about you? Do you like fairs? Yeah, I'll go on anything, really. Yeah, you're, you're going yeah. for any of these rides here? Yeah, and don't, don't scare me, cos I'm hard. You're hard, she <laughs> is. So, um, what's this I read about you in the papers just recently, about your talent? Well, it's, it's very annoying to us because, I mean, as though sort of four years on we'd still be harping on about we couldn't play. I mean, we've done six tours 
And of course we can play by now. And so, you know. Have you, have you got onto bar alone. chords yet? They're very difficult, aren't oh, they, well, girls? My sister plays guitar and she can do her old bar chords. She can do the odd bar yeah, chords. Yeah, no wangy bar. Bar, bar chords. That was for Nobby. But, oh, that was for Nobby. <laughs> Nobby, she did a for joke for you. Bar oh, chords. Bar chords. So, and any ride here you particularly fancy? The swing chairs, I think. The swing chairs. Or oh, the bouncy castle. Oh, no, no, no. We could all have a go on the bouncy castle. Yeah. yeah. yeah bouncy castle. No. I think yeah. No. Bouncy oh, castle. No. I don't think we should play with Jared on the bouncy castle. Do you, girls? <laughs> like oh. Yes, oh, all right then. Well, off we go to the bouncy castle. Yeah, it's the bouncy castle. I'm sorry. Yay! I'm sorry. Yay! Come on. Yeah. So far, I've got you a shillelagh and a shamrock. You've got some pea, and now I've got you the rare feathers. Hey, I'm tickle pink with them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's great. Now, let me just recap on our Jason competition. This week's question is, what was the name of the character that Jason played in Heroes? That's but you right. need next week's question too before you can answer the competition. Uh We've got the little ghost now. Shall I do the honors? Ghost? What do you mean, ghost? You people are making a terrible mistake. I'm not a ghost. Say what? I resent this unwarranted attack. I am not a ghost. And if you persist in treating me like one, I'll, I'll sue. Do you hear me? I'll sue. This is interesting, Ray. Remember that hefty apparition on West 34th Street? Well, this spunky little fellow is just the same. He really doesn't know that he's... Do you think he could actually sue us? Wake up, Horace. I knew I shouldn't have eaten that midnight snack. Rabbit always gives me the strangest dreams. I know. I'll pinch myself. That'll wake me. Oh, no. That's right, mister. You're a ghost. And from the looks of this place, a very messy ghost. Think me, I am a ghost. That certainly explains everything, doesn't it? Afraid so. Now if you'll just step into this little duplex ghost trap. You certainly don't think I'm responsible for this destruction. I'm the one who called you fellows in. Here, just like it says on this card. Gentlemen, I officially declare this ghost's mansion haunted. In stereo. Winston and I'll check it out. You two watch Mr. Identity Crisis here. Check. Ditto. Sounds like Uncle Horace knows how to have a good time. He always did. Pick up your sheet and come on. Dixieland. Our little sprite's got good taste. It's the Ghostbusters. What are they doing here? Did you call them? Never. But now that they're here, we can let them take care of Horace. No, this is family business. Besides, they'll ruin the carpets. You scare them away, I'll take care of my uncle. I'm sure we passed that picture before. We're just going around in big circles. I don't know. I'd like a second opinion. Ooh, ah, we. Now that's service. He ha 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 ha. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, hiss. Aye. Ow! Ah! Wow, did you see that? Nice tennis shoes. Nice sheet. Trolley gentlemen, it simply never occurred to me that I could be a ghost. Oh, now I'll never find my, well, whatever it was. I guess it doesn't matter now. Are you going to dispose of me? Well, you did call us for help, and I guess it'd be impolite to zap your employer. 
The best scenario is to let Horus disperse peacefully. But he can't, not until he finds what he's looking for. So let's go! Now, can you remember where you last saw it, Horus? If it were that simple, I wouldn't be in this mess, now would I? Funny, I don't remember switching on the record player. You didn't. The other ghost went upstairs. It's probably responsible for this musical interlude. Hmm, so much for your meters. There are two other ghosts, not one. I've seen them. One. Piffle, I've had enough. First I find I'm a ghost, and now this? Hey, <laughs> this ghost's pretty mean. I think you should leave the rough stuff to us, horse. Why? Don't you think I can take care of myself? Watch this. I'll show you how scary I can be when I put my mind to it. Who knows what evil lurks in the brains of ducks? Me do! Me do! Specter, is this the treads where neither ghost nor man may go? Might his name be Horus? Be gone, little fish. My pond is too big for the likes of you. I said, be gone. Yeah. Put me down, put me down, you brute. No, you don't. It's time we had a little talk. All right, I confess, I'm not really a ghost. I'm an imposter. Never would have guessed. Say, I remember you from the restaurant. What are you doing here? My fiance, Olivia Stewart, recently inherited this estate, and she wants to sell it, but she can't because it's haunted. So you thought to beat the ghost at his own game? <laughs> you folks are too much. Oh, my goodness, that's Olivia. Courage, my love, I'll save you. Ray, Egon, did you hear that? Way ahead of you, Winston. Meet us in the playroom. You're never going to believe this. What is this, a dime a dance joint? Sorry, my dance card's all filled up. Horace, let go of Olivia immediately. Hold it, Buster. I believe the lady promised the first dance to me. Aren't you Ghost Smashers going to rescue my poor dear Olivia? Hey, don't I know you? Oh, no. Another one. Oh. He's no fun. He fell right over. What happened to the great lover? Gentlemen, I suggest we concern ourselves with the, uh, damsel in distress. We can't fire as long as he's holding her. See that chandelier? It's giving me an idea for a plan. I want you guys to wait until I... Just hold on, Peter. You plan to swing from the chandelier because it's something you've always wanted to do. Well, for once, what you want to do is exactly what I've always wanted to do. Hey, be my guest, Egon, if it means that much to you. Perhaps I was a tad hasty. It always works in the movies. Yes, but they have standing! Now! I say, oops. 
my hero. My niece! Now I remember what I've been looking for! I remember! He'll never tango again. How did I do, Peter? Couldn't have done it better myself. Which I, for one, would never actually do. A guy could get killed. Oh? I know you! You're my niece, Olivia! I wasn't looking for a thing. I was looking for you! I just... I just wanted to tell you that I love you. One last time. Oh, Uncle Horish, I'm so ashamed. When you left me without saying goodbye, I... Hush, child, that's all done now. Goodbye, Olivia, my favorite and most special niece. Oh, Uncle Horace. He's gone. He dispersed peacefully. <laughs> There, there, my dear. He's found his peace at last. You know, darling, I don't think we should sell this place. I think our kids will really enjoy growing up here. Looks like our job is over. Yeah. Let's blow this pop stand. time on the Magic Castle with Fuzzbox. Oh, Come yeah, on! Yeah, 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 just yeah. a minute, just a minute. I've got programs to send up to the aliens and oh, yeah. you lot should be looking out for things for me. Oh, I've got to get your flag. Oh, well, I've got to get your flag. I won't go to the Magic Castle, OK? You do that. And we've got early days with Sophie Lawrence and we've got hedgehogs and wipeouts. Yep. Trapdoor. More from the beautiful south. south. What more could you wish for? No, at 11.30, otherwise I'll need to do you all. There you go. I'll do them at 11.30 when you've finished. Yeah. Yes? I'll do it at 11.30, I promise you. I'll just do this. Yes. All right. I will. I promise you I'll do it at 11.30. I promise you. When do you go back to work? Monday.
Oh, Kira, you do realise that when Nobby takes over as the lord of this castle, he's going to be your boss. Mind you, he is a lovely guy to work for, honestly. He's a beautiful sheep. And in fact, I think we've nearly got everything. We've got the shamrock, we've got the peat, we've got the yarn, the shillelagh, the eel, everything but the flag. And I think we'll leave that to Gerard. Oh, this takes me back riding along in a horse. I did this a while ago, you know. In fact, it takes me so far back. It takes me right back to my school days, which you can watch now with Sophie Lawrence doing her early days. Thanks for the list. Oh. As per usual, I was being naughty at school. This day, we chased two boys up the stairs. On the stairs, they decided they wanted a fight, so they pushed my friend and I down the stairs. As we fell, Samantha fell through a plasterboard wall and made a big hole in it. I decided to run up to class. Well, it was getting near the end of the lesson, and everyone was a bit restless, and laughing and joking and getting more and more in trouble. Well, Sam asked to be excused to go to the toilet. When she returned, she was laughing her head off and the tears were running down her face. She said, Sophie, you should see the wall. There's such a big hole. And, she said, and I tried to put it back together and all the plaster, well, it fell on the floor. It looks much worse. She found it funny, but well, I didn't really anymore. Well, five minutes before the end of class, I thought, well, maybe we've got away with it. When Matron entered and she said, boys, there is a meeting in the bottom studio for you all concerning an incident with the wall. Well, I looked at Sam, she laughed again. All the boys looked across the room at us. I started feeling a bit guilty, but Sam just lowered her head, giggling quietly. Well, it was the end of class and the bell rang and everyone headed down to the bottom hall. Sam ran over to me and said, come on, Sophie, it's time to make our great escape. If we go down to the station, they'll never catch us. Well, and by tomorrow, someone else will have got the blame. I grabbed my books and said, no, Sam, I think we'd better wait. But Sam and I waited nervously outside the room. We could hear the headmistress inside telling off the boys. Boy, she said, this is disgusting behaviour. Have you no respect for the school, kicking down a wall? The room went silent. I looked at Sam. I knew now was the time we had to go in and own up. She carried on. Boys, you'll have to wait here all night if nobody owns up. I knocked on the door and she didn't call me in. So I knocked again and entered anyway. Sophie, she said, if you want to talk to me, you'll have to wait till tomorrow. Sam headed for the door. Well, no, miss, I said, it's about the wall, you see. Well, it was Sam and I, see, Sam fell through it. The room went up in uproar. All the boys were laughing and joking and calling out to us. The headmistress turned to us and said, Sophie and Sam, outside my office now. We ran out of the room and we could hear her footsteps close behind. We waited outside her office and she turned the corner. Girl, she said, I admire your honesty. She said, there will be no punishment at the moment, but you'll have to pay for the damage. She walked into her office and slammed the door. I breathed a sigh of relief and looked at Sam. She smiled and said, you don't think I'm paying, do you? And we didn't have to either. If I ask you some questions, will you tell me the truth? Yeah, sure. OK, then. Were you ever naughty at school? Um, yeah, I suppose I was. What did you do? Um, oh, I got caught <laughs> knocking behind the bike sheds once. <laughs> did you? That's yeah. That's naughty. I'll tell you what, Fran. What? I couldn't possibly snug with you. <laughs> that's nice, why? Because your breath stinks of eels. Oh, that's right, because Gerard made me eat an eel. It was disgusting. Yuck. Well, <laughs> What else have you done at school that's been naughty? School? Apart naughty. from all that business. Um, I wasn't very good at being a rebel. <laughs> I well, tried. I was an apprentice nice. rebel. No, no. Um, on school, I tell you, I nearly died. On yeah. school camp, yeah, I was too fat for my canoe. <laughs> in Lake Oswater. We've got this, um, like, they've got this fibreglass just sticking in my legs. Mm. And, like, cos it was so small. And then um, we, I overturned. Capsize, whatever you call it, but I couldn't roll out. Cause oh, because your legs were too fat, they were stuck, they were wedged in. <laughs> yeah, and the can canoe was far too small, so I kind of hitched my body up and screamed for help and all that, and eventually somebody dived in and pulled me out. Oh, you're right. Did you get back in the water again? Um, yeah, I, was, I had to go ahead with it. Mm. <laughs> Be brave. Brave and Be strong. strong. So, what, what? Anything else happened to you that you did Naughty. 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 Oh, we used to do things on April Fool's Day, like sort of bomb the teacher, like get the bucket. Bomb above the, the teacher? <laughs> what with? Get the bucket above the, you know, get the door ajar when the teacher comes in. Whoosh. And what, what came out of the buckets then? I wouldn't like to say what was in the bucket. Tell us. You promised you'd give me Only all bits the of paper, bits of speed bits paper, of, bits of, bits of gunge paper. as well, and like jelly and. Ugh. You never spat into the bucket as well. I wouldn't do that. You're too good. I'm too good for that. 
Oh, yeah. He's a, actually, so you must be a very well-behaved young man. Was I? I suppose so, yeah. Yeah? Well, yeah, because in my school, they're all... We had loads of ads, you know. And so you won an ad. I went an ad. You were a soft I was, lad. No, I, was, no, I, was, I wasn't a soft lad. I was a, an apprentice hard. Apprentice hard. <laughs> Never made Where the grade. Where did you go to school? Uh, Manchester. Manchester. Yeah. Well, do you want to come Manchester. in for a cup of tea? Oh, I'd love that, look. And nice a, cup of tea. Nice cup of tea and yeah. a butty. Nice girl. Very, very nice girl. I'm a nice girl. Yeah. Come on, then, very love. Nice. Okay. Let's have a sandwich. Have a sandwich. All right, love. Right, I'll tell you when right. I'm naughty. Well, okay. I'm got, really got the naughty. I've got the flag. All I've got to do... No, it's just try to. Tr oh, 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 no, no, oh, um, look, here's a, here's trap door now, right? So, we're, we're, we're here it, here it comes now. Oh! Somewhere in the dark and nasty regions where nobody goes stands an ancient castle. Deep within this dank and uninviting place lives Burke. Hello! Overworked servant of the thing upstairs. Burke, feed me. But that's nothing compared to the horrors that lurk beneath the trap door. For there is always something down there, in the dark, waiting to come out. going down the swamp to do a spot of fishing. And I don't want to go. Moany boney. Come on, drut. <laughs> Steady now, little drut. He gets a bit excited. But he'd better get some bait. Worms is best. <laughs> Right then, let's get going. Do we have to? Oh, shut up. But fishing so boring, old misery teeth. What about the trap door oh. lifted open? Oh, what a lovely day for a spot of fishing. Got to catch something nice and vile for him upstairs. Happy, Boney? No, Burke, I'm not at all happy. I am bored. Oh, come on. Oh, look, here's a nice spot. I bet there's some tasty snacks swimming about in there. Ah, this is lovely. Aren't you glad you came now, Boney? Hey? I'm cold and I'm bored and I want to go home. Ah, here we are then. This is the life. Grut's enjoying himself. I bet I catch something really big, eh, Boney? I doubt that there's anything in there. Oh. I say, he's a big one. I think I might have considerable trouble stuffing that in a sandwich. Can we go home now, Buck? Oh, shut up. You're beginning to get on my nerves. But I don't think you're going to catch anything, Buck. Yes, I will. There's well, something. hurry up and catch it, then. You can't rush things when you're fishing, Boney. You've got to be patient. Oh, did you see that one? Now, that would make a tasty meal, eh, Boney? Yes, Buck. Yoo-hoo! What was that? Oh. I thought I heard something then. Crud! <coughs> Stop eating them worms, you greedy little... How am I supposed to catch anything if you eat all the bait? Burke. And you can shut up as well. You've done nothing but moan ever since we... Does. All I wanted was a nice afternoon's fishing. I wish I'd never bothered now. But there's something behind you. Something? 
Hello. My name's Rog. Good old Rog. He certainly brightened up my day. Hello. I like fishing. Mind if I join you? I don't know if I'm very good at this step, you know. Oh. No, you've got to keep doing it, that's oh, it. Okay. Oh, that's Nick, right. please. Oh. You're worn out. Exhausted now. Hey, you Can't know what? Red has an audience of like 18 million. Is 21. That right? 21 million? <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, we had that once, yeah. A lot of people. Uh -huh. What do you think makes it so popular? Um, people seem to like it of all age groups, you know, like mm. from kids mm. to. Um, we're a big fan with the granddads and grannies and all that. Yeah. Great, yeah. And what about your character, Billy? What makes him so popular, do you think? Because he's such a divvy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's good fun to play anyway. Playing somebody in such a burk. Mm. Yeah, and it's great. what lovely, other things did you do before that? Lots of um, fringe theatre plays and all that sort of thing. And what's uh, fringe theatre? Fringe theatre. It's all the little theatres you get in London. And mm. um, like not the main ones. Good not new the ones yeah. In the West although I've worked in the West End and stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was great. Mm. And what kind of? Things there must be all sorts it. of funny things that happen on a soap opera, like bread. What funny soap things? opera? Sorry, comedy series. Comedy, it's comedy, shot. comedy. Right, Carla. No. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. On the first day that Brian Murray plays Shifty arrived, he got bitten by a dog. He's trying to do a scene. How did he manage to get bitten by a dog? <laughs> well, he just went and took a dislike into him. Oh, it was Didn't like Irishmen. <laughs> really? What other sort of things? Um, I mean, do you do? Oh things yeah, like... we we have to. Um, Billy and Julie have scenes with a baby in that, and it, there's one that just would not stop crying. I had to turn up. <laughs> In the in the uh, the Volkswagen and get out of the car, and the the baby just would not stop crying. Then they got a standing baby, and that st wouldn't stop crying. Then we got another standing baby, and in, in the end, we just had to use a doll with the producer doing that. <laughs> the back of the doll, <laughs> make it look lifelike. You should do that to some of the actors to get better performances out of us. <laughs> Cardboard cutouts. <laughs> yeah, do you think that you're going to stay with Bread for a long time? Or? Oh well, I'm happy doing it. It's a good show. Mm. Obviously, I want to do other things. Mm, you know, because mm. there's some That's new right. characters now, isn't there? That's going to be a bit well, difficult. Well, new uh, new actors playing Joey and Aveline, mm. but they're both really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Graham and Mel. Mm -hmm. So is it really going to be nice like people. Dallas? You know, with Dallas and they changed the characters, they just came in, no one said anything. You just get on with it. Well, I don't, I don't know how they're going to build it up, mm, but. Mm. You know, hopefully it'll take off and the audience will give them a bit of a chance. Yeah, I hope so, because you're filming yeah. a new series now, aren't Yeah, you? that's right. Okay. Doing it at the moment. Okay, well, best of luck with it. Cheers. Good luck and um, so I'll show you around the ghost room. Okay, bit thanks spooky. for having us anyway. That's right. <laughs> Come on, then, yes. let's have a look inside. Okay. Come in. Nobby, 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 I've got you um, a jumper and some yarn. That's fantastic. Now there's only one thing I need and that's the flag. The flag, the yeah. flag. But you know what, I think you should send out Wipeout now as the la your last ever normal sheepish thing. Normal sheep? Oh, yeah. Now it's time for Wipeout about hedgehogs. Good morning. What time is it? What a lovely long sleep I've had. It must be spring. I can smell it. I can hear it in the bird song. Yes, primroses, definitely spring. I must say I could do with some breakfast. It must be nearly five months since I last ate a good square meal. I did pop out for a snack once or twice, but that doesn't really count. Lucky I had plenty of fat on me when I bedded down for the winter. Kept me alive. Got pretty thin now, though. Let's see, what's cooking then? A few nice big insects would do me very nicely. Aha! A beetle. Good for starters. Mmm, yummy. A fat pink worm. Lovely. A juicy slug would go down well after this. Hello, what's that? It's one of those toad things, I think. I wonder what that tastes like. Looks worth a try. Doesn't move very fast. It's trying to hide from me. No chance, mate. Yuck! Ugh! That's disgusting. Blech. Quick, wipe that revolting taste off my tongue. Phew, that was nasty. Don't get the feeling you're being watched. I keep hearing those people creatures talking about things called cameras that can see in the dark. Aren't we entitled to a private life? 
It's mating time, you know. Why don't you mind your own business? Hmm, he's rather good looking. This could be the man I've been searching for. The love of my life. Or the year, anyway. I'm not going to let him think I'm a pushover, though. I'll snort at him a bit, point my spines at him. Play a bit hard to get. He really likes me. I can tell by the way he keeps circling round me. I must say, he's beginning to wear my resistance down. I'll keep on telling him to go away for a little while longer, but I'll make sure he knows I don't really mean it. All right, then. How much do you love me? Really? That much? OK. Yes, I do love you, too. Come on, then. But let's go over there by those trees. Get away from those humans with their cameras. Nosy Parkers. But there's something else far worse than cameras pointing at you. There are these ghastly, huge, noisy metal things which come roaring towards you with bright, glaring eyes. It's terrifying. Rolling up into a tight, prickly little ball usually works wonders against enemies. Not against these roaring things, it doesn't, though. They just keep on coming towards you and, well, squash you, flat. I've lost several friends and relatives that way, actually, and I had two narrow escapes myself last year. I try to warn my babies about life's dangers, but they have to find out for themselves in the end. Their spines start developing when they're only three days old. Don't they sound sweet, squeaking away there? They're blind for the first couple of weeks, but I don't think they're in any danger here in the woods. Usually, we mums have four babies in a litter, but I have known some overworked mothers have as many as seven babies at one go. At three weeks old, they've finished with the mother's milk and onto the solids, you know, the insects and so on. Actually, to be honest, I've really rather had enough of them by then. I mean, the girl's got her own life to lead. So next time they want the milkies, I roll up into a ball and they get a mouthful of spines. Time to go out and find your own food, kids. Of course, I offer them a word or two of motherly advice, like hollow trees are pretty good for insects. And stone walls, too, if you can find them. Now, watch where you're putting your feet. It could be dangerous. Whoops, what did I tell you? Pick yourself up, never mind. Look, there's a moth over there. Nope, over there. Over there. That's right, there it is. It's a great life being a hedgehog, really. If only humans would drive a bit more carefully at night, the world would be almost perfect. Oh, those hedgehogs are so sweet! I know, all you hedgehogs out there, look out for those cars and, of course, the skateboards. That's Talking skateboards, of skateboards, the competition. Yeah. Now, this week's question is, what was the name of the character that Jason Donovan played in the ITV series Heroes. But don't forget, you need next week's question as well before you can enter the competition. That's right. <laughs> yes, Nobby. that's right. Oh. Nobby's not going to be here next week no, because not, not I've got the flag. The flag. The, you know, these here. flags, the nautical colours, stand mm. for N, which stands for Nobby, yeah. who now becomes the lordship of Shane's Castle. We're in the money. <laughs> We're in the money. <laughs> well done, Nobby. <laughs> What's the matter, Nobby? What's the matter? <laughs> He said, he said, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> oh, oh, look, oh, look, um, look, oh, look. Nobby, calm down. I'll calm him down. You calm on, down. Oh, come on, Nobby. You watch the beautiful <laughs> South play their song while we calm Nobby down. Oh. <laughs>
Nobby, no, 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 come on, take a deep breath, take a deep breath, okay? Tell us what's the matter, come on. <laughs> well, if I become Lord Chief of Shane's castle, that means that you're gonna all get on the ghost train and drive off and leave me! Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no! No, oh, I got no, 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 me! Get, get a grip of yourself, her. man! <laughs> all right, come on! <laughs> You've got a firm decision to make. This is no Do time you want for to stay here, yeah. be the lord, and be very rich and have this entire place to yourself? <laughs> Or do you want to stay on the ghost train with your friends? Now take your time, bearing in mind you're gonna be rich. You're gonna no. be rich. No. Come on, no, decision come on, to Nubby. make. No, come on, Nubby, please. I'm gonna stay with you lot on the ghost train! Yeah! 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 Best decision you've ever made, Nobby. Better You're telling me. You guys, you haven't met each other, have you? No. no. Mrs. Vicky, Maggie. Vicky. Hello. Hello. Big fan of yours. Oh, oh, some oh, good news cool. and some oh, yeah. bad news. Okay, what's the what's All right, right, the bad news is that Nobby, after we've gone and collected everything for his will, does not want to stay here and be the Lord of Shane Castle. What? What? I was yeah. furious. But the good news is, he's going to stay on the ghost train with us. Well, oh, that's it doesn't point. matter. Oh, yeah, oh no, that's yeah, true. Yeah. It doesn't Let's matter. Let's be happier than me. Uh, listen, we can go to the Bouncy Castle again if you want. Oh, uh, no. No? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, that'd be it. <laughs> so rude, isn't it? Oh, OK. Nobody. Shall we go and look at the um, organ over there? Nobody. All right, then. Nobody. Let's go yeah, to the Bouncy Castle. Have a look at. OK. I like it. Oh, look, it's over here. A bit rude, that. 